an announcement was made recently within Egypt, pertaining to an amazing discovery made within an area of the Giza Plateau that for a number of decades has been conveniently shut off from the public. Although the location is claimed to be a military training base, archaeologists have apparently been secretly beavering away within this remote slice of antiquity. Announced by the Supreme Council of Egyptian Antiquities, Egyptian authorities have apparently found the mysterious traces of the legendary Fourth Lost Pyramid of the Plateau. This provocative announcement stirred up a gale of protest among many Egyptologists, and the reason for this may be because the discovery might turn out to be highly controversial. Although the pyramid is in a very bad state, and this may be due to its immense age, and these surviving blocks clearly displaying evidence to indicate that the missing blocks have simply eroded away over the eons. This ruin may not be the most important find in the area, or indeed, the purpose for the video. Along with these pyramidal remains at the site is another amazing anomaly. In the middle of this mysterious desert, an enormous staircase has been found plunging into the desert floor. Seemingly excavated before this announcement and left for those who were fortunate enough to get access to the area to rediscover and photograph. This enormous staircase plunges straight through a limestone basin many meters in depth. This surgical slice has revealed an astonishing implication. It has revealed that the Giza Plateau does indeed extend this far. Not only that, but it demonstrates the sheer, unimaginable cubic size of this area of stone. A block of stone that was apparently man-made. Where this staircase actually leads to is as yet unknown, although it is thought to drop far below that which is currently visible, and preliminary scans of the area are suggesting that it plunges through the plateau deep into an ocean of groundwater below. By examining the pictures of the discovery, it appears that the site has indeed been excavated from the sand, having most likely been submerged from view beforehand. The question is, who did these excavations? Who built this unbelievable structure, or indeed, the mind-bogglingly enormous Giza Plateau? Who built the pyramids and sphinx upon it? Where did such an enormous stone plateau come from? How did they shape and carve such mysterious structures with such blocks? Or perhaps, most importantly of all, where does this staircase lead? Did whoever undertake this excavation task manage to discover where it led? More research and exploration will undoubtedly be undertaken over the next few years. We will, of course, keep you posted. Did the Great Sphinx once witness the bottom of a sea? There is evidence. Things we have covered on this channel in the past which would suggest just that. Who built these astounding structures found dotted all over the earth? When were they built? Were they really, like academia would like you to believe, built by primitive civilizations with the use of primitive tools, often made of copper and notoriously soft metal? Or is there a possibility that these structures were made by a far more ancient, far more capable, world-traversing civilization? Built in areas of geological interest, most often the center of a landmass or placed upon key lines? Although there is a large number of artifacts and archaeological factors which strongly suggest this exact scenario of events, we feel there is one collection of artifacts or rather evidence of this people's past existence, which, just like their clear originally intended function, could tie these monuments neatly together. Known as the missing ancient metal clamps, given their predicted age and metallic composition, the fact that they are no more should come as no surprise. However, the carved seats that these clamps once sat within are still present in the stonework of many ancient structures found all over the world. Within our own modern-day society, a society that can travel the world in a day and speak to the other side in an instant, 
technological advances are often copied or shared between nations. The concepts being the same, yet the manufacture slightly differing in form, and the metal clamps display this exact phenomena. Slight variations in manufacture that can be seen dependent on the landmass the ruin is found upon, yet the concept behind the construction of these amazing and perplexing structures, often constructed using blocks we have no explanation as to the placement of, remain the same worldwide. Dry stone walling often accompanied by these clamps made with such skill, the blocks are now often perceived to have been made to measure. The clamps once functioned as seating clips. After the fresh construction of these stone structures, the builders were clearly very aware of shifting, which can be seen, as blocks settled over the following years. This offers a presumption that these structures were intended to last many centuries, if not millennia, and the metal clips were also designed to indeed rust away to nothing after their function was served. Amazingly, it seems that out of the countless thousands used, a few of the clamps have somehow managed to survive. The clamps from pre-Columbian South America that have been examined show them to be made of a very unusual alloy. 2% arsenic, 95% copper, with traces of iron, silicon, and nickel. This composition is particularly interesting within Puma Punca because there is no source nickel anywhere in Bolivia. The clips are clearly a compelling link between these ancient structures found all over the world, but more importantly, the builders of them. These amazing artifacts clearly deserve much more attention. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. The enigmatic remains of a creature discovered within a bear lair along the freezing banks of a river within Yakusha, Russia, turned out to be that of a perfectly preserved lion. However, it is a species of lion which died out over 50,000 years ago. Known as a cave lion, it had recently been released by ancient permafrost, which is currently melting within the area. The find has predictably attracted a lot of attention, and it seems a group of South Korean and Russian scientists believe it is so well preserved it would make a great candidate for an attempted cloning program. Like something straight out of Jurassic Park, they want to attempt to use its extremely well-preserved DNA to recreate an entirely new branch of the species, based solely upon this one small cub, which died over 50 millennia ago. Quote, The cave lion was a predatory animal, a coval of woolly mammoths that lived in the late Pleistocene from 150,000 to 10,000 years ago, and became extinct at the end of the late Pleistocene, about 10,000 years ago. Valery Plotnikov, PhD in the study of mammoth fauna, Academy of Science, Saka Republic, told Sputnik.com. The cave lion was slightly larger than the modern one, but it didn't have a mane, and there was no tassel at the end of the tail like the one modern African lions have, the scientist said. In the late Pleistocene period, this beast had no rivals. Bears, wolves, and other predators provided him with no significant competition. According to Plotnikov, the cave lions mostly fed on reindeer, noble deer, young mammoths, wild horses, and musk oxen, and most likely led a solitary life. Dr. Albert Protopopov, head of the Department of the Study of Mammoth Fauna at the Academy, told the Siberian Times that the preservation of the lion cub remains may allow for a future cloning attempt. However, according to Plotnikov, there are no plans to clone the cave lion just yet. Although they strongly believe the process of extracting the cave lion's DNA and then splicing it with the genomes of our modern-day African lion, the closest modern relative of this extinct feline, would be a success. What do you think regarding the cloning of extinct animals? Scientific breakthroughs? Playing God? Or maybe a Pandora's box waiting to be opened? Let us know in the comments.